Hello everyone, it's Dave here from Save Decks, bringing you another video talking about Wii games that I think need to come to Switch. Part 1 is already on this channel, link is in the description down there, so make sure you check that out. While you're down there, make sure you leave a comment, talk about which Wii games you think should come to Switch, and I might mention them in a future video. And also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the future ones. So I was intending on doing these videos in blocks of 5, and you may have noticed from the title I've mentioned there are 6 in this video. Why are there 6? Well, because although I'm doing this in 5 blocks again, the first blog is going to talk about two games at once. There have been rumours and reports recently of the old 3D Mario games getting remastered for Switch to celebrate the 35th anniversary of Mario, and that is why I'm dedicating the first block to Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2. I remember that first weekend playing Mario Galaxy with some friends and having an awesome time with it. Unlike 64 and Sunshine, the stars had a more linear structure to get to them, and although I prefer the more sandbox style of platformer, it didn't really matter to me when you're just thrown into levels that are oozing with this much creativity and imagination. The gravity mechanics work so well and they are still impressive to this day. The only thing I'd worry about is how they'd work the controls, seeing that both games used Wii remotes, and although that spin move could easily be mapped to a button, the fact that you had to use a pointer for shooting and collecting star pieces might be an issue. Of course the Joy-Cons are capable of recreating this, but how would that work in handheld mode or with a Pro Controller? Maybe mapping it to the right stick whenever the pointer was needed in the original game? Maybe the riding on the ball could use normal controls rather than tilting? But what really worries me is when it comes to using Yoshi's tongue, but maybe they could just have him auto-aim at things that are near him. I would love to see both these games come together in a collection, bundled with Mario 64 and Sunshine 2, but we'll just have to see, won't we? And the next game I'd like to see come to the Switch from the Wii is... Punch-Out! This was a nice blast from the past on the Wii, bringing classic Punch-Out! gameplay with an amazing art style. You could use motion controls or the classic NES style button layout. Imagine being able to play this with those NES controllers made for Nintendo Switch Online. This is a boxing game that plays a bit like a puzzler where you need to work out your opponent's tails to know when the right time to strike is. This one wouldn't need a whole lot added to it outside of being upgraded to HD, but its art style still looks amazing to this day. Remember, when this came out on the Wii, Little Mac wasn't as well known as he is now, seeing that he was just an assist trophy in Smash. Since then, he has become a fully fledged fighter in both the Wii U version and in Ultimate, so a re-release on the Switch can let people who love Little Mac and Smash Brothers experience him in a game of his own. Next game I'm going to talk about is... Wario Land The Shake Dimension. Yeah, this game is known as The Shake Dimension here in the UK, but I know it's called Shake It elsewhere. I really don't understand why they changed the names, but I'm not a marketing guy, so what do I know? Like Punch-Out, the art style for this game still holds up, and I would love to see what this looks like in HD. Wario Land is a series that has been dormant for too long now, and they are fun 2D treasure hunting platformers, and this one is no exception. It does have a gimmick of shaking the Wii Remote to do things like emptying bags, but that shouldn't be needed, you could just button mash really. Each level also has three treasures to find and three extra missions you can do, which adds to the replayability. Even in playing it just to capture footage for this video, I was so tempted to just 100% everything in it. If they want to test the waters to see if a Wario Land game is in demand still, then this would be an excellent one to bring over to the Switch. And just, just look at this menu screen. Don't you all want to see that in HD? Sweet. 
So we've been looking at a few cartoony art styles today, haven't we? Let's have another one. Beat the Beat Rhythm Paradise. Yeah, over in the UK we call this one Beat the Beat Rhythm Paradise. Although I do know it is also known as Rhythm Heaven Fever. Kind of like with Wario Land, I don't know why the name was changed, but I'm sure it makes sense to some people. This game is essentially what you would get if WarioWare was made into a rhythm game. Fun, fast-paced and challenging rhythm games all presented in a bizarre, quirky way. Wanna have a date staring at some weasels while defending her from oncoming sports balls? You can do it here. Do you want to see monkeys high-fiving each other while swinging on the clock hand? Who wouldn't? Wanna play badminton while flying around in planes? What other way is there to play it? The thing that surprised me about this game is that it doesn't use motion controls. Just button inputs are needed. I really do admire this game for making that choice where a lot of minigame compilations couldn't resist shoehorning them in where they weren't needed. But they knew a game this intense is best left to button presses and it's all the better for it. There is also a 3DS version, which acts as a compilation of games throughout the whole series, which maybe the Switch could benefit from something like that, but if they were to remake this particular game for the Switch, then I would definitely be on board. So this video has been full of some colourful games, haven't they? So let's end with one that has the word colours in the title. Sonic Colours. Here's a Sonic game that was a Nintendo exclusive, and it would be nice to see a remake of this one. If not just so younger players can find out where those wisps that keep appearing nowadays originally came from, this was one of the better 3D Sonic games set on Robotnik's space-themed amusement park, containing 2D and 3D fast platforming and power-ups that change things up enough just to keep it interesting. Each level has collectibles too in the red rings hidden around the levels. This sort of challenge would be so enjoyable in handheld play, as the levels can mostly be beaten rather quickly. With the Sonic movie coming out and being successful, maybe Sega can capitalise on his recent popularity by bringing this game to the Switch. Oh, and I really like the cutscenes in this too. So that was part 2 of Wii games that I think need to come to the Switch. Which Wii games would you like to see come to the Switch? Make sure you let me know in the comments down below, give me some suggestions that I might include in future videos, and if you don't want to miss those future videos, hit that subscribe button, join the party, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye everyone.